Welcome to Italy, the land of romance, history, and mouth-watering cuisine. Today, we're taking you on a journey through this enchanting Mediterranean country, where we celebrate the culture and cuisine. Our very first stop is Luni, an old school bakery selling panzerottis fresh off the press. Panzerottis are similar to a calzone, but they are smaller and can be baked or fried. We got a baked salami panzerotti. The doughy pouch was filled with spicy sliced salami and a tomato sauce. The smaller size makes it the perfect snack to enjoy while shopping. Looney has a huge variety of both sweet and savory options. So there's something for everyone. In Italy, food is not just a necessity. It's an art form. Italians take immense pride in their culinary heritage, where every dish is crafted with love and tradition. This pizza we had in Milan is the perfect example of art. Our very first pizza was the Diavola, known for its devil style sauce. We were surprised that the pizza was served uncut and it's commonly served as a main dish for one person. The crust had a perfect crunch with a hint of char from the wood fire. The pizza base was super thin but not crispy. It was chewy and light. The star of the pizza was definitely the flavor. The freshness of the tomato base with a kick of spice from the salami. The perfect balance of flavor and dough meant that you could eat the whole pizza without feeling too full. We also ordered the lasagna. The lasagna noodles were cooked perfectly between the layers of sauce and cheese and you could easily cut through it with the press of your fork. The flavors were simple and delicious. Of course, no European summer is complete without having gelato. Venki is known for their chocolate, sweets and gelato. It's a very popular chain that you can find all over Italy. When exploring for gelato, the first rule is that the container needs to be flat and sometimes it will have a lid on top. If you see big molds, they are tourist traps as they are whisked up so that it is filled with air to make them look big. Rule number two, if they have a lot of flavors, then they are most likely industrially produced, as it would be impossible to have all those flavors homemade. We ordered strawberry with stracciatella and creme and chocolate. Gelato is made with milk, so be warned, it melts a lot faster than ice cream. The flavors here were very fresh and delicious. But after exploring other gelato stores in our trip, we found even more delicious gelato. Our culinary adventure in Milan doesn't end here. We had to try the authentic veal Milanese. We stumbled across this cute traditional restaurant along an alleyway near our hotel. We started off with bread, burrata and prosciutto. This was the perfect entree to get our appetite going. The burrata was so light and creamy and the bread with olive oil was delicious. We had to stop ourselves before we got too full. The veal Milanese here was gigantic. It's traditionally served bone in, breaded and fried in butter. The meat was so juicy and tender, and it reminded us of a chicken schnitzel. We also ordered our very first carbonara. The spaghetti was al dente, but the creaminess of the carbonara wasn't as good as we hoped. 
To complete the meal, we ordered a limoncello. This is something that you would sip on after a meal to help with digestion. It's a strong hit of zesty lemon and alcohol and is definitely something you need to try in Italy. There is no such thing as too much gelato. Gusto Gelato is a cute and cozy gelato chain that offers very rich and creamy flavors. The pistachio was so thick and overloaded with pistachio flavor and nuts. It was truly amazing. We really enjoyed this gelato over Venki. Welcome to Lake Como, one of the most beautiful places in Italy. With the stunning mountain and lake view, breathtaking villas, and unforgettable dining experiences, Lake Como is definitely a place you need to visit. La Grotta, a restaurant that holds a special place in our hearts and our stomachs. They are known for their amazing wood-fired pizza and pasta dishes. The restaurant is cozy with vaulted ceilings and windows looking into a small flower garden. We ordered the Grotta pizza, which has tomato, mozzarella, prosciutto and mushrooms. The focaccia pizza and finally the seafood pasta. The wood-fired pizza had the perfect crust and base. The mozzarella cheese has this amazing chewy texture that was so addictive. The focaccia pizza was just dough. We read the menu wrong when ordering, so maybe order something else. Ah, pasta. Italy's soul-stirring gift to the culinary world. We had low expectations for pasta after Milan, but this pasta turned out to be the best seafood pasta we had on our entire trip. The tomato sauce was sweet and rich and the seafood was cooked perfectly. Each bite was pure bliss from the seafood, the sauce and the texture of the pasta. We enjoyed La Grada so much that we returned again to get pizza on the go to watch the sunset by the lake. The next morning, we took a ferry to explore the beautiful Varenna. We arrived first thing in the morning to have breakfast at Bar Il Molo. There are multiple cafes along the lake with stunning views like this. The breakfast options were a bit limited here, so we ordered an omelette and a ham and cheese toasty. The vibe was very peaceful and romantic. But be warned, you will be swarmed by baby pigeons for a bite of your food. We also noticed that they opened up another seating area with an even better view for lunch service. So maybe explore Bar Il Molo for lunch to get those stunning pictures and views. Whether you're a passionate foodie or an adventurous eater, our Prato promises an unforgettable dining experience. This hidden gem surprised us with the finest gourmet creations and I'm sure they will leave an everlasting impression on your taste buds too. We ordered the octopus special, truffle beef tartare and a fish pasta to share. The octopus was served like a flower it was almost too pretty to eat. But wow, once you try to cut it with a butter knife, the octopus melted. This stunning dish was so complex with the tenderness of the octopus, the freshness of the puree and all of its supporting elements. It was honestly the perfect starting dish. The fettuccine pasta tasted like it was home cooked by your favorite Nuna. 
The fish pieces were cooked perfectly and every ingredient tasted like it was freshly picked from the garden and tossed in together with a handmade fettuccine. This truffle beef tartare, wow, this dish was definitely the main character. The beef was so finely minced that it melted in your mouth instantly. The truffle was so intense, but it also made the beef flavor shine even more. It's served with these crackers, which reminded us of dried instant mama noodles, but it was the perfect crunch and salty element to tie this masterpiece together. This was such a perfect dining experience in Verena. We highly recommend coming here for lunch. Another must place visit in Lake Como is Leno. You've probably seen the stunning villa Balbianello that a scene Star Wars was filmed at. And Leno is its hometown. After a morning stroll around the villa, we embarked on an adventure off the beaten track to dine at Ristorante Il Cris. This authentic restaurant has amazing pizza and seafood. We started off with some prosciutto and rock melon. Name a better duo. The sweetness of the prosciutto and paired with the juicy rock melon was so refreshing and texturally amazing too. We ordered a classic margarita pizza and I must say, the cheese here in Italy just hits differently. It's so flavorful and has this chewy bite to it that gives the pizza a whole new depth of flavor and texture. We also ordered a seafood pasta to share. And luckily, the waitress told us to share because look at this beast. It was served piping hot and filled with prawns, clams, mussels, calamari. What more could you ask for? The mussels were our favorite. They tasted so fresh and they were so generous with the seafood. We were so, so sad that we couldn't eat more at Il Chris because everything was delicious. Our last dinner in Lake Como was at Bistro Antiki Sapori. This busy restaurant is hidden amongst the small alleyways in Bellagio. With pasta being a standout at all of the restaurants here in Como, I decided to give the spaghetti carbonara another chance. And I'm glad I did. The smooth, creamy carbonara with the thick spaghetti and the crispy, salty guanciale all together in a twirl of your fork. Each bite tells you a story of Italian tradition and passion for food. We also ordered another diavola because honestly, this never disappoints. The pizza crust here had a nice doughy bite to it and was thicker. Surprisingly, we found that the thinner crust at La Grotta was our favorite. To finish off, we had this cute tiramisu pot plant. A luscious combination of coffee-soaked ladyfingers and creamy mascarpone. The layers were melted together to give you a smooth, creamy and airiness to each spoonful. If you've enjoyed this mouth-watering tour of Italian cuisine, don't forget to like and subscribe to join us on part two of our Italy culinary adventure. Ciao for now and thank you so much for watching.